Greetings, and let's take a look at this essay here. The question is, using the source, evaluate the view that prime ministers have too much power. So let's go through the basics. It's a source question. So all of your, all of your uh, initial points need to be drawn from the source, but it is asking you the question. It is not asking you what the source is saying. It is asking you what you think using the source as your starting point. You can bring in your own evidence to support and to knock down the source. Um, you can bring in your own arguments to criticize what's in there, but you need to use the source as your starting point. If you just come in with um, an argument that's kind of out of nowhere, you will receive very, very limited credit for it. It is a normal essay, therefore your essay must be balanced. So you must, you must put forward arguments on both sides and they need to be there sufficiently, but it is also an evaluation essay. So although both sides must be present, one side must be pulled up and the other side must be pulled down doesn't matter which way you go. Um, we're looking for evidence which you can bring from the source or you can bring in from your own um, and uh and other than that, it needs to be a, a, a decent length. You will have to build in time to read the source, so I would probably be looking for introduction, three paragraphs, conclusion, as a kind of a norm. Um, there may be exceptions to that if you have a particularly long two sections, or maybe a kind of a shorter four sections if you're a particularly fast writer. Um, but that's the essay we would be putting together. Although, although it's on paper two, there is no requirement for a synoptic link um, in the source question that only applies to the the essay. So whilst you may refer to issues from other units, there is no requirement to do so. So these are the arguments that we can find in the source. I'm going to talk you through them and then I'm just going to kind of talk about how you might want to back them up or you, how you might want to knock them down. So starting on the agree side. So first of all, the PM's power of patronage gets obedience from others. So the PM can give out cabinet positions, junior minister positions, government advisor positions, um, they can nominate a kind of head inquiries and all sorts that, you know, they really have a lot of, of ability to reward people and that gets obedience from others because anyone that's on that kind of career path um, will want to be on relatively good terms with the Prime Minister because that will directly affect their career. They can even, for example, um, create new peers in the House of Lords. I mean, just look at what's happening with John Burko now. He hasn't been given a peerage, um, even though all other speakers had, probably because John Boris Johnson doesn't really get on with them. Um, so um, that power of patronage does get a lot of obedience from uh, Parliament, members of Parliament, and, and so on. But of course, it doesn't work on everyone, and you do get people that resign from the Cabinet, you do get people that refuse positions, you do get people, again, like John Burko, who are deliberately argumentative and kind of go, you know, I'm not bothered about this kind of patronage. Um, and so on. So build it up, knock it down, it works on both sides. And the PM can dominate cabinet by deciding the agenda, the departments, the members. Okay, so this is similar but different to the first one. So the similarity is hiring and firing. So the PM decides who's in the cabinet and decides what position they have in the cabinet. But also the PM decides what gets discussed in cabinet meetings. The PM decides whether they want to use cabinet. Remember like Tony Blair's sofa government, um, the quad, um, the individual kind of, um, what do you call them, like cabinet committees and things like that. Um, the PM even gets to kind of create and destroy parliament, uh, the whole departments. Think about the, the, the uh, Department of Brexit, whatever it's called, Department for Leaving the EU, uh, which of course got di uh, was dissolved after um, uh, Brexit actually happened. So the PM really does, can control the cabinet by dominating the agenda, literally dominating the agenda. Um, a prime minister can also be a lot more, have a lot more power if they have senior allies that um, also support them. So I'm thinking here of Cameron and George Osborne. I'm thinking here of Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. I'm thinking of perhaps John Major, Michael Heseltine. And if you're if you don't have very senior allies, you can struggle. So for example, Theresa May did have allies, of course she did, but the big other heavy hitters in the Conservative Party, Michael Gove, Boris Johnson, um, etc., they weren't really, some of them, they weren't really them, um, and so that she didn't have that kind of senior line of defence to kind of protect them. Um, and perhaps the most obvious, and I'm sure the one that you would want to talk about in your essays, large majorities in Parliament make it very unlikely that a Prime Minister will lose votes. So here you get a chance to talk about how the parliamentary system works, you get to talk about whips, you get to talk about majorities, you get to talk about how laws are made, you get to talk about, well, even if there's a small rebellion, the Prime Minister will still get things through. Um, so there, there's, there's lots to kind of talk about on that one and to show you, demonstrate your understanding of the relationship between um, Parliament and the executive, and uh, how we have a kind of a fusion of powers and all sorts of things. There's, there's lots to kind of talk about there. 
But that's not to say that this essay should definitely be an agree kind of an essay. Let's look on the degree disagree side. So in reality, there are limits to whom the prime minister can hire and fire. If they fire certain people, they might face the leadership challenge. They might be they might be certain individuals that are actually very popular that the party what expects to kind of be there. Um, there's all sorts of reasons why a prime minister might not be able to hire and fire certain people. So, for example, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown actually had a very um, bitter relationship by the end, but Tony Blair never felt that he could really fire Gordon Brown. Um, there were, Theresa May uh, couldn't hire and fire people because half of them had resigned by the time they kind of got there. And there's also a need within that for the Prime Minister to, to balance the cabinet. Now remember, not all, all of these arguments aren't necessarily true. So someone like David Cameron really did try to balance the cabinet. Oh, one argument I missed, the coalition government, of course, there was big limits on who Cameron could hire and fire because half of them, uh, well not half of them, about a fifth of them, the ministers came from the Liberal Democrats anyway. Um, the Prime Minister often need, needs to balance their cabinet, but whether it's Lib Dems and Conservatives, whether it's Brexiteers and Remainers, whether it's um, One Nation Conservatives and, and right-wing Conservatives. Um, but it is more or less up to the Prime Minister whether they want to do that. And Boris Johnson's initial cabinet was very uh, much to kind of one side, had a kind of Brexit feel to it. So um, you can build up that, that argument or ignore it, depending on which example you want to use. Um, Cabinet ministers have been responsible for bringing down prime ministers in the past. Right, be careful on this one. I've, I've read this too much in essays. The cabinet does not have the power to bring the prime minister down. There is no official veto. There is no magic button they have. There is no constitutional law they have. But politically, they have been able to put such pressure on the prime minister that, they, that, that the cabinet was essentially responsible for bringing down Thatcher and probably responsible for bringing down May as well. So many of them resigned and told her that she needed to go, that there was enough pressure there. So you need to word it carefully. You cannot just say the cabinet has the power to bring down the prime minister and without kind of backing up what you kind of mean by that, because it, it's not a it's not like a vote of no confidence. They don't have that power. But at the end of the day, if the Prime Minister loses the support of all of their senior colleagues, they're going to go. Prime Ministers are limited by the obedience of Parliament and their NFP. So hopefully what you're doing here is you're seeing the pairs of arguments here. And they're more or less going to go along the top here. So the Prime, Minister's, the Prime Minister has the power of patronage, but actually in reality there are limits to whom they can fire. The Prime Minister can dominate Cabinet, but actually there is a need to kind of balance them, and Cabinet has brought the uh, ministers down in the past. So, so look at the things here. Now obviously, Prime Ministers are limited by the obedience of, of Parliament, their own MPs, goes directly with large majorities make it unlikely that a Prime Minister will lose votes. At the end of the day, if the Prime Minister comes out tomorrow and says, I want to bring back concentra concentration camps, they're not going to get it through Parliament, even if they had a majority of 200 or whatever Blair had. Um, there has to be that um, political reality and support there from the MPs and from their own party, which is their last point here, is that you can actually get Prime Ministers like Tony Blair, who were relatively popular, in fact, and Margaret Thatcher will be another example here, Tony Blair and Margaret Thatcher were still relatively popular in the country, but their own party brought them down um, because their own party had one eye on the next election or they had kind of had enough of them ideologically and things like that. So the support of ultimately the power of the Prime Minister can be blocked by Parliament and by their own party in UK politics, which is different to America in many ways. Um, on, on, on that aspect. Honestly, I think this essay could be argued both ways. I think there's good arguments on both sides, but whichever way you choose, you need to build up one, knock down the other, or the other way around. If you just go, here's one argument and here's another argument, your AO3 will be terrible. Be careful, this is a source essay. These are the arguments that are there from the source. If you start bringing in things like the Supreme Court can block the Prime Minister and talk about Boris Johnson and proroguing, it's not there. Now, you will receive some credit if you use it to, uh, if you talk about perhaps large majorities over here and maybe kind of talk about how the Supreme Court can still block, you could get some credit for that. But if the Supreme Court is the main focus of your paragraph, that's wrong. Another example might be the royal prerogative powers of the Prime Minister. If you start talking about how the Prime Minister can go to war or how the, or even proroguing Parliament, again, that's not really in the source, or it's not in the source. So those would be examples of paragraphs that would not be creditable in this essay. So now, now you've watched this video, go and check out the uh, individual feedback for your particular essay and, um, and see how you've done.